We're back. Hey. hey, everybody. Welcome to the Horseshoe Lounge. This is the new season of the, of the podcast, the Horseshoe Lounge. We are at Roosters for a fun, casual conversation. Training camp starts on Thursday. That's Justin Zwick, by the way. That's Nicole Cox from Roosters. It's Bobby Carpenter. Jeremy Birmingham. That's me. I'm Austin Ward, if you don't know us. I, this, is this is weird. Weird feeling. I feel like I know you guys. Oh, man, I'll tell you. It's, it's, great to, it's great to be back here. It's great to have you back, Austin. Thank you. It's great to be back. Getting ready to roll here a little bit. We're right on the eve of camp, so that's fantastic. Should we just start this with a singing of happy birthday yeah. to Bobby Carpenter? Yeah. You know, he walked in and he didn't even didn't notice. He didn't even notice it. That makes it even better. We have a new logo for this week's show. Oh my God. <laughs> That's terrible. That is terrible. Didn't even notice. Trademark, didn't even notice trademark uniform, right, Nicole? <laughs> trademark uniform and the no shirt. I mean, that is definitely on the Bug Eye Cruise for Kansas. That's a big picture of my face. <laughs> no I, shirt on. I, how old are you, Bob? 39. 39. Wonderful. There you is, look great for 39. There is a new sign. It's down there by Jay-Z. Maybe we'll put that up later. But we had to have this one. Happy birthday, Bob. Yeah, happy birthday, Yes, Bob. happy birthday. Well, thank you. It's nothing else I'd rather be doing right now. I, I, I don't know about that. Let's coach some kids football here later after that. Maybe go to dinner with the wife. We'll I'll be there. Dinner? That's right. Do you have like a birthday like tradition or a birthday dinner that's your, like, this is what I want on my birthday? No, not really. I mean, go get some good steak, get some good... Uh, I go to a nice little steakhouse, sit down, relax a little bit, have some wine, chill out, you know. I mean, it should be pretty good. That's some coach bad. first day of football for the kids. Nice little Monday. Yeah, nice yeah. little Monday. Long Monday, so. Do those kids have to go check into the hotel and a bunch of media stands outside uh, and takes their picture? fourth grade, they don't have. <laughs> no, have no camp check in? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no deals yet? No, 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 no. <laughs> deals we need to talk about with those young It's possible. Oh, He's Brian Miller, so he's uh, a great older. That's right. Fifth and sixth. That's what I thought. Okay, I remember seeing him. Yeah. I'm like, he wouldn't be on college. Uh, Jay Z, how was your summer? Summer's been great. Had a uh, second little girl May 27th. So Congratulations. We were so excited to find out about that. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Thank you. Yeah, I guess. I did a bad job telling everybody we were having a baby. It's all right. But, uh, it's been a great summer, a lot of family time. Uh, the wife's been off. So we've just been chilling at the house so nice. and playing a couple rounds of golf here and there. We're happy to get out. A lot to but, celebrate. Uh, yeah, it's been a great summer. And family edition, Bob's yeah. birthday. Uh, Nicole, what are we celebrating for you? I don't know. Nothing? Just Nicole's just busy. Birthday like six years. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> just planning. If it Roosters could only golf be that outing. Way, that'd be yeah. amazing. Yeah. Roosters yes. golf outing time. Buckeye oh, Bowl yes. trip is getting ready to start back up. Ooh, wow, that man. Is what? A Buckeye Bowl trip? Yeah. Wow, how does that work? Um, well, we give away 12 trips to whichever bowl game the Buckeyes go to. One per week? Yes. Again? Wow. Yes, it is. Wow. With wow. weekly prizes to other wow. people who don't win the grand prize. Jeez. Yes. So that deal. starts at the end of the month, first right. week of football. Really? And then we have the Notre Dame game, guys. Oh, that's right. Really out of the it's coming up. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Roosterswings.com, I bet they could probably start registering at the end of the month. At the end of the month, yes. That's good to know. Um, Berm, what's new with you? It's been pretty quiet around here. I need a haircut. Yeah. Um, football. You just got one like 10 days ago. I know. How many haircuts do you get? No, it's just I get these really, my colic is awful, where like, it takes over my head. And uh, I don't know. So we'll no, no, I mean, that's, I've Should asked them, over. I've asked them essentially to just like go to the skull yeah. on the colic, but they refuse to. The yeah, they like refuse to do it. They're like, well, if we do that, then the rest of your hair will look bad. I'm like, look at my face. <laughs> it's going to look bad no matter what. Nobody's <laughs> Just butcher me. <laughs> butcher me. But they won't do it. Oh um, gosh, wait until there's blood. <laughs> so it was amazing. I went and got a haircut probably about two and a half weeks ago. And I always try to get it like if I had some stuff coming up. Give enough time in case it's not ideal. A couple weeks to grow out looks good. Yeah. The lady cutting my hair, I was questionable, did an okay job. My son went in and got cut afterwards, and oh my, it was not, it was not good. Need a new location. So I'm like, uh, she, and she's like, oh my gosh, the lady was kind of like, let me describe her too. And she's like, yeah, I go, she cut mine. I was pretty intent with what she was doing. She may have been under the influence. <laughs> Okay. I mean, it was, oh, it was rough. Sounds like a party. Yeah, yeah it was. Like it was a little bumpy. So thankfully, my dude's got. <laughs> it's like two weeks. It's starting to grow out. We're on vacation in the lake, so it's like all blown back yeah, anyway. That's so right. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, well. It's great to hear that. Missed all of you. It's fantastic. What's been going on with you? Oh, just, I mean, you know, it took just normal, some time to summer. reset. Yeah, yeah, very, very normal. Um, so we've got the podcast going. We've got, uh, I've taken over as the publisher of Dotting the I's, a rival site. Maybe I'll expand 
the staff at some point. We'll see. Um, I, I'm looking for a recruiting writer at some point. Uh, if you guys know anybody, send them my way. Uh, and Bill Landis from The Athletic has already joined us. And uh, I do get to podcast with Vern, which is a real plus. Yeah, that we have a lot of fun. Big time plus. And, uh, the fun hasn't stopped. It wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't be the same if he wasn't sitting over there. Just crying, crying, crying from the hot wings. That he's gonna I had those sweat. prior oh, to no, no, you guys. Sweat. Oh, sweat, oh, from yeah. sweat from the eyes. Yeah, it's eye sweat. It's been a while. It's eye sweat. Uh, yeah. So other than that, pretty quiet. Just... It was a weird summer, right? <laughs> but we're back. Things are normal. It was weird. Things are normalizing. I didn't, normalizing, yes. I don't feel like I made the most of it. It was stressful for not having a job, but guess what? It's over because we're back to work. The Buckeyes report on Wednesday. First practice Thursday, I assume in the morning. I haven't got confirmation of that. Sometimes they, they split them up, Bob, as you know. What, Get some young dudes out. Vacation. I went over there Sunday night and I was like, man, they'll be here. It's four o'clock. I, I didn't realize camp hadn't started yet. I was like, dude, it's Sunday at four o'clock. You usually get the morning off on Sunday. That's right. They're still doing something. I pulled up like they were in a car in sight. Like, what is going on? Are we not trying to win anymore? Like, I'm kind of 11, concerned. I thought you said 11 2 wasn't good enough. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe less is more. Maybe, yeah, that's, maybe. maybe that's the mentality. Yeah. So, well, it's an innovator. so they'll be out there Thursday. Uh, we'll have coverage of that. We'll be talking about it, of course, in the Horseshoe Lounge. And we'll have some Buckeye leaves. We're bringing them back. I love it. Nicole. Got the notebook going. Who are you watching? Heading oh, yeah. into Thank there we go. Right. What? Oh, what do we have? Yes, please. Ooh. Look at this. We have some mozzarella sticks. Sounds like oh, appetizer, appetizer oh, Tuesday, yes. Bob. Hey now. That's this right here. You know what this first bite is gonna be the most magical? <laughs> what do you know what do you know about those? Man. Yeah, you can just put that over here. Yeah. <laughs> There's what we oh, amazing. My, so my daughter asked for some Oh, that's right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank that's you. Liberty's favorite as well. It is. Tomorrow. Not off. $2. No, $2. $2. $2. Sorry. No, it's okay. $2. It's been so long I mean, it's since we're out of money. practice. Yeah. I know. $2. I'm not at, $2. out of practice eating that, though. That was yummy. All day long. Nicole, will these so be fast. available at all locations? All locations. Or at least they easy. should be, yeah. unless I find out something tomorrow. But yeah. No more backups anywhere. No more backups. Well, we sometimes it happens, guys. <laughs> sometimes that happens. Yeah, but occasional email that things may have shifted. That's yeah. right. Okay. So, mozzarella sticks, Appetizer Tuesday. Do not miss it. Um, Got to have it. And you got to have some Buckeye leaves to break down while you're there. And Nicole's going to start with the player that she's most looking forward to hearing, watching, seeing, deliver throughout training And there training are camp. a lot. We yeah. haven't talked in a long time. I know. So it, well, it just flags it up. And go it, it's hard. I know. It's, it's hard. But I was thinking about it before we came on today. And I, you know, we need to see more from our pass rush. You know, we need more pressure from them. And so I'm really excited to see Jack Sawyer. I'm excited to see... Um, I think he's a great kid, um, I'm, so I'm just excited to see what he brings this season. I think it really is a season where a lot of eyes are going to be watching him. So. Loves roosters. Mm -hmm. he, he does. does. From Pick, Pick Town. Yeah. He's There's someone over there by the high school. Mm -hmm. it's perfect. Yeah, it's I'd be definitely interested to see how that rotation plays out for the Rushman. You saw the veterans sort of going first before Jack Sawyer and JT Tuimolo out during spring, but that's that spring game performance, those two just looked like okay. game You were out there blocking the tackle sometimes. <laughs> let's, let's just be realistic. Well, about it. I always tell people, we, of course, the level of competition, <laughs> they tried to make sure, that's why they rotate guys out because they're trying to keep them in with better tackles to be able to give quarterback some semblance of time. Well, I saw, the, I saw them doing <laughs> that to some starting tackles there. throughout spring camp as well. Yeah. I think oh, Devin, Devin Brown, like in his first uh, time in the horseshoe, like, <laughs> Somebody stop that person, please. All right, Jay-Z, what do you got? Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to piggyback that a little bit. Just JT on the other side, yeah. you know, another young guy who waited a long time to commit to come uh, to, to Ohio State. I think having a full year in the weight room, I think he is probably going to come out and you know, show what he's really capable of um, after a full year getting bigger, stronger, being around Coach Johnson. Um, that was just a quick one. I'm going, my Buckeye Leaf is going uh, to Jaden Ballard, okay. uh, the speedster from my hometown. Wow, I wonder why. Uh, well, yeah, he is from Masson, TIG. Um, but I'm excited. Devin Smith was here. We had. I think he expected us to finish it. We had a burner. No, so, somebody watching is finishing okay. I'll tell you that much for sure. Uh, but I think having that guy take the top off is going to be huge if we can rely on him to get down there and, uh, you know, fight for balls that. That may be up in the air. Yeah. 
I, I think that'd be good. Devin Smith, every time he scored back in the day, we always won. So I think it's nice to have that guy that can do that, especially when you have all the other receivers who are great route runners, maybe. You know, you just kind of use him as a guy to clear things out and then let these guys come underneath. Is that, a, is that a fact time. that we never lost and never yeah. scored a touchdown? Yeah. Yeah. Un- undefeated. And, it, and he was averaging something like the odds of that are still. Like, I mean, yeah, it was Ohio like Ohio State doesn't lose often, so yeah. But the well, first year he was there, they didn't lose a number of yeah. times. I think yeah, every he, time he scored, we, we won the, the game. touchdowns. Was the one that actually won the game. I think he had something crazy where it was like twenty-seven yards per touchdown reception yeah. too. Just yeah. that's insane what Devin Smith did. So I think that's a huge weapon for the offense. I mean, we have all kinds of weapons on the offensive side, but if you can have a burner that can really get after, you know. Defense has to take notice. I'll see Jaden Boward switched his number in the spring to Devin Smith's number nine, right, Berm? So maybe trying to keep there. that going. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Pay tribute. Bob, what are, you, what are you watching? Oh, goodness. I mean, I thought for sure that uh, Nicole would go with an offensive guy, a wide receiver. She's, She's branching out. Yeah, a wide She's receiver. <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, I do so love I was thinking about I Jack Sawyer going there. But, you know, we were just discussing before this. Like, you know, it's going to be hard because I want to pick a linebacker. Of course you do. It makes sense. But the guy who I really like, to quote a, a former Buckeye coach, one of my all-time favorites, <laughs> is Cam Brown. He's been at Ohio State for 17 years. He came in right after Justin and I left. He's had 47 injuries. He's battled through a lot of stuff. He's ripped a dude's helmet off in, in the game. Just ah, that's right, yeah. Hey. The shankability factor, I think, yeah, we're not, is there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he was at least someone that wasn't willing to take it laying down. All I'm asking for is a little fight, but if he can stay healthy, I think his leadership in the secondary will be huge. We have Josh Proctor, some other guys. You know, uh, it'll, uh, it'll be, oh, goodness, watch uh, Ronnie Hitz, Denzel, Denzel Burton, Denzel. You know, obviously, but Ronnie and then you know, Jordan Hancock. I think jo- and Jordan Hancock being young, so he's the better of that group by a number of years. Yeah. And his guidance and presence and the fact that it's tough to be that shakeable guy, <laughs> shakeability guy when you're playing corner because corner is really viewed as like the toughest position in the world right. as far as physically guys playing it. But I think he has the respect of all of his teammates and he might be able to provide you know, a little like Damon Arnett style because he had that as well where it's a little bit different way to go with things. <laughs> but he is that guy on the defense that I feel like will be that emotional leader. So I'm looking forward to them monitoring during camp, giving him some vet days, but making sure he can have a, hopefully a big final season. Of State. Yeah, he was definitely frustrated with the number of those vet days in spring. He wanted to be out there uh, a <laughs> lot. Dude, no one cares like, about the practice. Yeah, hey, please don't. Like, you don't need to go. So Nicole apparently took Bob's pick, so Bob decided to take mine and my guy Cam Brown. So now I'll just have to see what Berm does, what's left for me to Obviously, die. I'm picking someone on both sides of the football oh, because okay. th- that's what we do here. We're providing in-depth analysis. That's right. Uh, defense, it's Teron Vincent to me. I, I think that the Buckeye defensive line, obviously, edge rusher-wise, they should be pretty good. You have a lot of guys there that Zach Harrison, Javante Jean-Baptiste, the guys Jack Sawyer and JT that already been mentioned. but. Having a, a stalwart defensive tackle, I think, is important. And I think Teron Vincent and Ty Hamilton are guys that I'm really looking forward to see what they do. Ty Hamilton, I think, is going to be a surprise Ooh. in the Big Ten this They're year, period. The light. <laughs> um, but I, I think Teron Vincent's kind of the guy that can really change things a little bit for them internally in, in the defensive line. So not only is he doing both sides of the ball, but also multiple guys. Well, yeah. <clears throat> but, I've been. I haven't, yeah, I haven't talked in a while. He's going I haven't talked in months. <laughs> um, uh, I and it's stupid. Maybe offensive line wise, I think Paris Johnson sort of the guy to me that will change how this offense goes from you know being a really good offensive line to a great offensive line. If he's what we expect him to be, uh, and the continued growth of Dewan Jones on the other side, if if you can keep C.J. Stroud upright this year, that offense is going to score a lot of points and. Uh, obviously, they're going to be good, but yeah. can they be great? And I think that they have to be great to win the national Leeds, championship. I think it's the word to get, to get to that the yeah. edge. Bob. So it's Paris Johnson because he's a, he should be a first round pick next year. He should be a top five pick in the draft next year if he is what we all expect. What him you to be. expect him to be when you were scouting him out in high school? Correct. Yeah. The ankles have grown. Yeah. Ankles have grown. He's no longer got those skinny ankles. But they're still skinnier than that was. Most. That was my favorite scouting report from Berm. We went down to Cincinnati. That's what I'm talking about. It was the first time I met him, and he's like, "Look at this guy's skinny ankles." When you see a guy six seven, three hundred and fifteen pounds with ankles like that, you're like, "Oh, this different type of athlete." 
Oh, that's why I got to pay him the big bucks and bring him on board at some point. Uh, you only get that with Burr. You can only get that. <laughs> you only get that. You can only get that here. I think like every position. We'll talk about the linebackers with Bob later on in the show. If there's any th- where you look for Ohio State, where there's not a lot of proven experience, proven production, you look at it and say, "Is this the same level that it's been the last couple of years?" To me, it's tight end. You say, "Well, why does it matter? They don't throw to the tight end." These this two, is the year. I don't even think that that's it. They, it's the two tight end sets have been so prevalent for what Ohio State has done under Ryan Day. You've got to have somebody to hold up to block. Energy. And you've got to have somebody who can catch something out there. That's right. But Cade Stover's back then. We went back and forth talking about the Rose Bowl and the move over. He's played some defensive end. He's played linebacker. He wants to play on defense. And then six practices in the spring, now putting on a different colored jersey and going back over there. It's, it's all three of those guys, really. I mean, you have to find a workable unit that you can depend on out of Cade Stover. Joe Royer, G. Scott. Now, there's other guys in the mix that are going to potentially play. We'll see how that goes. But Pete Martell. You, yeah. You're going to try him there. Well, in the Tebow, the, for a long time. In the Tebow role. Those, those guys have to hold up. I don't remember that. <laughs> it's, it's new. Oh. It's new. So I'm looking at The wrinkle. Now. I think Cade Stover, we've talked about him for so long. Just the toughness. The He just wants to hit people. And so if right. he gets to hit people at tight end, great. If he gets to hit people on special teams, great. But you have to have a guy like, well, you're talking about Cam Brown, right? And just having that desire to inflict pain on someone on the football field, no one on that roster has it like Kate. Well, and I think Kate will bring an element of toughness to the offensive line when you get in short yard cool. situations out there, which what we saw, we could throw the ball for 500 yards, but can you get one yard when they know you need that yard? In the snow. The longest yard, yeah, right. if you will. And you need a guy up there who might grab a face mask, yell at somebody, like, dude, we're, we're going to get this. We're coming right here behind me. And we're going to drive out and have that sense of pride and, like, have a defensive attitude on the offensive line. I was thinking about that when Berm was talking about the offensive line and keeping C.J. Stroud upright. With, with the one exception of struggling a little bit in November, which is the one that mattered the most, pass protection wasn't really an issue for Ohio State. It was what Bob's talking about. Can they line up and smash people and convert on third and two when they want to run? And they weren't able to do that in that Nebraska game either. They had a couple that they couldn't. Well, it was it primarily showed up on that first drive in the third quarter in the big house. That yeah. was that was the biggest issue of all. Um, you know, times Penn State. We've seen that I mean, going back a couple of years. Ohio State didn't finish off some red zone drives in that first Fiesta Bowl against Clemson. This has been talking about the offensive line taking the next step. And to me, it's not about the pass protection. That stuff is going to be there, and they'll scheme up ways to get the football out of C.J. Stroud's hands quickly and effectively, but there's no, you can't replace it if you've got to be tough and get two yards. Well, right? you got Nicole? a new line coach too, right? So that's got to be bringing a new attitude, a new uh, life to that room. I'm really excited to see you know, what these guys say about him you know, once they're, uh, they're able to talk and just really, uh, if he's putting in any kind of new schemes or if he brought anything new or is he just saying, hey, we're just going to do what you guys already did. It's, better. it's interesting. This is what I want to do or how I want it to. Because yeah. you've got kind of the gap scheme and zone scheme, mm-hmm. two ways to run offensive line football. And, you know, Ryan and like those guys listening to him and Justin go back and forth on that has been pretty interesting. <laughs> like what they want to do and how complicated you can make it. Everyone talks about complexity in the passing game, but you go watch the San Francisco 49ers and what they do with shifts and motions and moving guys back around. I mean, you can do a lot of things to create some issues. It's just how much time do you have and how much you're going to actually run it and try to parcel out who's going to have what opportunities during the game. Yeah. Nicole, is there anything else in that notebook before you get out of here? I, know, are you, I mean, Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson are both gone, so I I, I, I'm that probably hasn't set, set in yet. Hopefully play okay. this year, but <laughs> Um, it is, it, it's exciting because I remember when we first started this and maybe a little bit before that, you know, the team, everybody had like graduated and gone to the NFL or moved on. And now we have all these, we had all these young guys who are now really becoming confident in their position. So yeah. I think this should be a really great year. A lot of, I mean, other than taking those wide receivers that you love so much out of the mix, that is, Ohio State's roster is pretty well intact by yes. most normal standards because that draft class wasn't that large. So right. a lot of veterans, a lot of experience coming back. Should be it's a pretty be fun, fun year. Yeah. It is. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I think we'll probably just talk about it every Monday in the Horseshoe Lounge. There's mozzarella sticks this week. Yes. Two dollars. Two dollars Tuesdays. Two dollars Tuesdays. <laughs> what else is going? How was How was National Wing Day? Um, it was great. It was okay. great. We did twenty percent off everything just to kind of help um, the kitchens with. 
cooking the wings because you <laughs> can actually get too many orders <laughs> um, and just with shortages and things. So it, it worked out really well. Okay. We enjoyed it. Yeah. All right. Are you are you gonna tap out, or do you want to just stay throughout the whole? Time? I'm gonna have to tap out, guys. Okay. I've got to get back to work. I'm I, so I sorry. Know. You always have to. That's I'm okay. I'm so sorry, but I'm so excited for next week. I'm so excited to be back. Yeah, this is amazing. A lot more to talk about. It's great to be back. It's great to have uh, Nicole Cox from Roosters in here for a fun, casual chat at a fun, casual joint. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back here in the Horseshoe Lounge. All right, welcome back in uh, to the Horseshoe Lounge. Got Jay Z, Bob, and Berm still here to hang out with me and talk about the start of camp. You guys have been through this. What are the last few days? You're done with summer workouts. You just relax, just go hang out on High Street and Lane Avenue till till Wednesday or what? Do you, yeah, what okay. are the last just couple days? Open like seventy two hours straight for us, and then, uh, you know we just went up there. Okay, yeah, good. So every year we started before August first, except for my my junior year when I turned 21, which worked out really well. How convenient. It really was. It was it was unbelievably convenient that the one year of like, I don't want to be in training camp. We can start ideally on the third. I think we did start on the third. So I was able to go out, have a good time, try to pull someone out of a car on 13th and they sped away. I tried to run with sandals on, went spewing out into Neal Avenue. Oh boy. Or, uh, not Neal, um, Indianola. <laughs> Bad deal, hurt my elbow. I was afraid, I'm like, I, I was like, oh, I think I broke it. Thankfully, it was good, though. But other than that, normally, we'd be starting, like, we would already be really that story. That, that's what you get. Everybody's just, thinking back saying, man, 05. Bobby was on the hour. 04, 04. 04. 04. 04. He, wore, 04. he wore a huge, like, brace on no, his arm. it was like. good. Well, I didn't want to blame him. I didn't want to tell Doug Well, I'm sure he didn't. No, yeah. didn't. So how did this happen? Well, let exactly. me tell you how. We were getting out of the car, and we, my one of my friends, <laughs> my 21st got us a limo and like driving through the streets it's obviously very narrow we were driving slow someone was honking as we were getting out so I went back and I was I don't know what I was going to do yeah. it was at the end of the night I have a conversation with him about yeah, like conversation. Yeah, yeah. it was a lady sitting a in fun the front casual conversation. it was a lady sitting in the front seat so I went to the front there was a dude behind him like alright you, this is the one. <laughs> grabbed it and all, she just took off as soon as the limo got out of the way. And I was running. I had flip-flops on. Couldn't keep pace. I mean, they're in a car. Yeah, and they're in a so, car, yeah. And I uh, kind of drug me and then yeah. spewed, me, spewed me out of the Indian Hall. So <laughs> I had that. It was not great. But other than that, I mean, I try to get a little bit. Like, usually one night, but give yourself a couple days. And don't go too crazy. Because, like, you don't want to be going to camp hungover, feeling terrible about life. Yes. Like you've been working out all summer to get yourself ready and you don't want to just jeopardize that. Jeopardize all that. Yeah. Dehydration. <laughs> Dehydration's a, a real problem. In it is. Yeah. yeah. And if, you know, you're not drinking not the water, water though, you're right. not a champion or what are they? That's championship hydration. Yeah, championship hydration. Oh, you know. Bad dude yeah. in the bottom. Yeah, bad dude. <laughs> bad dude. <laughs> Bob was a bad dude when he came in that first day. Well, I was good. I was drinking a lot of water. Hydrate, hydrate up. No doubt. But I mean, over there, there's endless supplies of water. And they just put it in your mouth and squeeze the bottle in. All the Gatorade you can drink. That'd make it a lot, a lot easier. Uh, yeah. Jay-Z, I, I, yeah, I got more than I bargained for I right here. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, I was, at that same time, I probably wasn't even at that party. <laughs> I'm thinking... <laughs> Before, just doesn't his friends it. It. His teammates didn't before. go to his twenty first oh, birthday party. But uh, <laughs> I was probably, you know, at home in the playbook, getting ready for, of course, yeah. for camp to start. I mean, two thousand four. Uh, that would have been, you know, that was my year. It was a year. I mean, it was a crappy year, but it was my year. It didn't start out that terrible. <laughs> well, no, it didn't. But then it kind of went downhill. It went, uh, it went haywire though, and now your story about, you know, perhaps getting splayed by a limousine. Uh, uh, can it shed some light? It started off good though, so yeah, yeah, we were fine. To do with it. <laughs> it was we the, were the number five team in the country. Week I four, I remember my one of my friends who is a sports agent. He was telling me, he's like, dude, you guys aren't the number five team. Oh, I'm like, that was the year know, Ohio State lost to Northwestern. Yeah, we lost like what fourteen guys. Yeah, he's like, you lost way too much. I'm like, I don't know, we're pretty good here. He's like, dude. Your running back situation. Yeah, we didn't have Maria. Yeah, if we had Maria, it'd been different. That was a loss to Northwestern that year. Started. Yeah, started at Northwestern. A thirty-three to seven trouncing yeah. against Iowa. And then, no, Iowa that was, was the last, that was yeah. the death blow, and it, the death and blow was way too. Yeah, that was because my, that was when he got yeah. Tim Matt Roth, who had a <laughs> flame tattoo on his arm and a matching on his cap. He was a wild man. Was over there Naturally. and took took uh, so it was a rug took game. Tim Schaefer. Literally, like we call it. Who had played defensive end before? Yeah. 
Well, actually, in camp, he yeah. came to camp as a defensive end. <laughs> that was our offensive right line tackle. situation. Right? <laughs> didn't, work, didn't work out that well for you, Gene. Yeah, uh, I mean, he got four know, lifted. Oh could. no, he, I remember vividly watching this from the side. He got picked up. I called it the double sack. I mean, it was basically like what Bosa did Bosa? for the running back. Oh, I said <laughs> this. This was against the offensive, offensive tackle, tackle, and it was his blind side. It was bigger than him. Oh yeah, yeah. Tim Chamber was a big dude. But Roth, it was uh, amazing. Yeah, so yeah, but uh, camp, camp's always fun. You guys that's football back. season's back, and uh, yeah. you know, that's what they train year round for. So it was nice for them, I'm sure, to have a somewhat regular off season right. uh, for the first time in a couple of years. I'm guessing, and uh, you know, getting all that through. And I mean, I'm, they're ready to rock. Everything that you read or hear, sound bites, like we've been. Going next, you know, everybody says the best thing. shape yeah. of my life. Yeah, you know. yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty cool. I'm plus two, but we're doing plus three. You know, like, ah, okay, <laughs> let's go. Plus like, seven. They're plus, ready to rock. Plus and, 20. Uh, Just go. It's really plus three. I mean, you've got Big Ten Championship, CFP, Semi, and then the yeah. final. I mean, that's the plus three, or if I've ever heard one. Yeah, so I mean, it's exciting. I, th- I think they're ready to rock. Get to Indy. Maybe fun. get to Indy is the new slogan again. Well, that's what uh, Ryan Day was talking way. about last week in Indianapolis. Got to beat, got to win the game. Got to win the Big Ten. Got to get, go win a national championship after that. Uh, you can only do one at a time. It's sort of interesting the way that the schedule sets up, though. That you know, you st- you're Ohio State. You open with Notre Dame in the Horseshoe in prime time. You can't just spend all summer talking about team up north periods. I mean, you have a, a real one coming yeah. on September third, and you've got to I mean, answer some real of these one questions. Last year went that's right early on in the season, and that's you know. When you talk to maybe not huge Ohio State fans or whatever, Ohio State always starts slow. I was talking to a Notre Dame guy. Ohio State always starts slow, you know. Uh, we might come in there and sneak you. Been undefeated. <laughs> I don't know about Who's that guy. Who did it's, it's a you know everybody thinks last year. Well, I lost to Oregon last year in the first game. I'm like, well, this is a different team. Right? It also wasn't even the first game. Well, yeah, okay, whatever it was. But yeah, you know, it's no, like this is a different the, team. There's a history though. I mean, if you look back in the last 15 years, there's the Texas loss, the USC loss, the. Um, USC losses. USC losses. The Virginia Tech loss. Obviously, there. You know, yeah. People, Oklahoma. The people starting see slow though. Like losing to Texas, the number two ranked team in the country. Like in a close in game. a close game. I mean, like Oregon. That was a whole. That was a horse of a different color. Right. Beating of a different kind. Burn. I mean, the USC was but a beating of a different. The average kind. person isn't thinking about it objectively. Comparing right. opponents, they're going well. First big yeah, game at home. So first big game at home. First big game at home. So, you know, Ohio State has to come out and be ready to go. And to his point, you can't just be spending the whole offseason thinking about Michigan when, quite frankly, you can let that fuel you. It, it, yeah, loss, it, can, but, it can drive you, but it, yeah. Notre Dame is going to come into Ohio Stadium ready to upset the Buckeyes. Oh, that's all they've been. That's, that's all they're talking about. You know. Your GFF is over there. <laughs> <laughs> they're going hey, to be ready. Yeah. Trashing the value of your diploma while he's at it. Get out of here, man. Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, what's this? Is the spread still 14 points? Is the spread 14 and a half, yeah. It's, what, it grew? It's, I was 13 and a half. It went over that hook on top now. That's... Because there's more concern, and we'll get into this, obviously, as the month goes on, about Notre Dame's quarterback situation than there is Ohio State's defense. Well, based upon what I saw when they played Cincinnati last year, I would say that there should be an ample degree of concern. <laughs> so we can't really weigh in that much. We don't know what's going on in South Bend. Got a better idea of what's going on with this Ohio State defense. Bob, what what is the biggest question mark for you about that Jim Knowles scheme and this group that's got to you know, restore the pride of the silver bullet? Restore the roar. Um, <laughs> the roar of the silver bullet. Can't, I, I guess, number one, they're gonna. I'm curious to see how much stuff they're going to be able to execute on game. They've run a lot of things now, and Jim Knowles is a very complicated defense. Can disguise a lot, but to do that, you have to understand thoroughly what you're doing. They look good in spring. Now, obviously, they didn't much run much in the spring game. They look good in practice. But it's a it's a jump now when you go to a game and it's going to be at night and there's going to be a bunch of things flying around. It'll be loud on the defensive side of the ball. So people are talking about noise. Noise is great and disrupts the offense. But as a defensive player, like you have to be understand it as well and know like we got to be on signals. When things move, everybody has to be aware and alert to make sure things aren't changing. It's that communication piece you know, on the back end to make sure that they're all on, on the same page. I, I, have, I want to see how Josh Proctor is going to be able to handle that. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that has a ton of ability. I think everybody knows what his potential can be, but he hasn't played a lot of football. He's been hurt. And you know, I think he's healthy, ready to go. He, he's confident, should be back there and ready. And then you know, his, his communication, you know, and, 
and Ronnie and um, you know, will they be able to communicate all that well? And Corey Williams, like, how they, how's this rotation going to go? Right. How are they getting in there? I mean, is this something you're just going to keep letting them play, or is this something where you're going to have a, you're going to have something where it's kind of a standard set deal? Where hey, this guy takes this many plays, he takes that. Is it a feel? There's just a lot of variables there, and especially for a group, I say the back seven, where you need a lot of communication, and they're more experienced now, but it's still a new scheme. Yeah, I mean, they're more experienced. Age-wise, but not you know not in this whole new system that they're going into right. uh, and trying to get out there on the field. I mean, there is a lot that goes into it. Everything I've heard is that they're they're handling it pretty well, and there's a lot of great coaching going on. And you know, feeling like that defense is going to find it find itself this year yeah. and be one that I mean, because you know we have the recruits right. We're up top ten, or whatever it would be every year in recruiting. We have the horses. He's got to buy into the system, learn the system, know it by heart. And I think these kids have really done that here in this offseason. It's only been one offseason. Do you need to to really feel comfortable? I hope so. Yeah, you'll think get to. A, I mean, yeah, Jim Knowles yeah, said that get in, in spring. He yeah. knows he doesn't get a second chance. Yeah, so. It's not Oklahoma State where you get three or four years to build. Yeah. He's got and, you're, and, you're, and you're looking at him saying, man, I got all this pressure. I mean, like, it's a different beast when he came to Ohio State. Everybody was used to it. So, you know, he's uh, – He's getting underneath every rock that he can, mm. finding everything that he needs oh, yes. to do to get done. <laughs> Unearthing stones. Towering like over that. rocks. I love it. Sounds fun. Yeah. Uh, I just think you have to wonder how the, the linebackers fit into this scheme. Obviously, last year we watched as Steel Chamber sort of emerged as that, that guy. Uh, Tommy Eichenberg, according to all reports, has been as good as anyone else in that room. And, and you know that it seems like those Tommy's two. Tommy's going to be fine. Everybody wants those to are the guys, right? trash on him. Like, look at how well he played in the second half of the Rose Bowl. Those man. are the two guys, right? So how do you fit in everyone else? How do you fit in Chip Trainum? How do you get uh, what, whatever you get out of Taraji Mitchell and Cody Simon? How do you figure out a way to make sure those guys are involved and active and, and buying into what their, their role is? Because you know that a lot of these transitions, especially the jack position and all that stuff, is going to be utilizing the, the defensive ends that we already talked about yeah. and trying to get more of those guys on the field. So it's going to be a situation where, you know, you hope you don't have a linebacker flipping the middle finger to the stadium. And, I was waiting for that. Uh, you know, if, 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 they're not, if they're not getting reps. But there's, I don't think these guys are there's not going to be that, that There's not going to be that many reps, right, for linebackers. And so you better make the most of it. Oh, no, the worse you are on defense, the more you play. So, I mean, that's it's kind of an ironic situation. If you want more snaps, you just, just give them first down. Yeah. Give them first downs. All right, well, that's that's some interesting yeah, analysis. That's from, a different kind of coach. From Bobby Carpenter. I love it. Uh, it's it's going to be fascinating to see that. And it, it doesn't just apply at that linebacker rotation. Bob talked about this earlier with the safeties. And Josh Proctor and Ronnie Hickman, and you have Tanner McAllister and the, the Bandit, and you Cameron Martinez pushing for reps there. Lathan Ransom is back. Medical advances. Holy cow. I mean, that guy's leg was scattered all about the floor of the Rose Bowl, and now he's back, going to be ready in some capacity for training camp. Just absolutely crazy. Um, so you throw him in the mix, Court Williams as well. How do you fit all those pieces together? Is it... I think you have two lines, essentially, and I think it's better that way. But remember last year, early on, especially against Oregon, we're like, what is with the mass substitutions? Yeah, like, yeah, defensive like guys let them... Uh, yeah, I'm not play. saying you should do it every other play. I'm saying if <laughs> yeah. you need to take a break... Yeah. Okay. You, this is your series. You have a defined... Next series, these right, guys You have fun. defined roles between the, the three pre- presumptive starters in, in uh, Josh Proctor, Tanner McAllister... Um, and Ronnie, Hickman. and Ronnie Hickman. And then you can rotate in Cam Martinez, Court Williams, and Lathan Ransom into that mix. And I think that it's good to just have a clear-cut delineation between the starters and the backups. We've been on for about 35 Cam Martinez, Cam Martinez, Cam Martinez. <laughs> the first time that you had mentioned him. And he didn't even do it. I had to do it for him. It's a new bird. Like, What's the switch on? It's a different yeah. show. I thought what? for sure he I mean, was going to take him for his bucket. I, well, I know, and he didn't do that. It kind of caught me off I'm guard. I'm not – I'm a real person, okay? I'm a real person here. We're talking about real things. Cam Martinez is going to be great. So is the rest of the secondary. I really think that this secondary is going to be one of the revelations of college football this season. I think it's going to be a completely different – like mindset and approach and result than we've seen in the last couple of years. I really truly believe. Top ten. I, I think the pass defense will be among the top ten in the country. How about the rush defense up front. I, I think that's the bigger question. I, I'm not. I truly think that the the interior, the defensive line, and the linebackers' ability to consistently get there and stuff the run 
is the most important thing for this defense this year. I mean, it's the most important thing for any defense ever, right? But you have to stop the run. But I think that people are going to be very surprised at how not just adequate the defensive backfield is, but full of, of superstars. I think this is a dynamic group of, of corners. I, I would second that. And they're, they're really talented. And so, I think how good Jock, Josh Proctor can be in the middle, playing over the top of that. Like, there should be some room for turnovers this yeah. year. But like you said, you've got to stop the run. I had a defensive coordinator, t- coordinator tell me, multiple actually, but one in a very emphatic way that there was nothing worse in life than not being able to stop the run. Said so in life, he said yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, well, there we go. It's a strong oh, take. It's been, a, it's been the staple of Ohio State football for decades. Is you stop the run first, and then everything else comes after that. And what we saw last year was, Twice. was just simply pretty gross. And, uh, and I mean, they were averaging over three yards carry or something. Run, those games. Running the ball on offense is about attitude and personality. And stopping the run on defense is about the same. You have to simply say, I'm not going to let you do this. And we saw an Ohio State defensive line last year that was pretty much just okay with it. And that was shocking. Yeah, can't have that. They've got a month now to prove that toughness in camp before they get ready for Notre Dame on September 3rd. Gosh, I missed this quite a lot. What a great day. Great to be back in here, Roosters, for a fun Casual joint, fun casual chat with my friends. It's Justin Zwick, Bob Carpenter. Happy birthday hey. to Bobby. Hey. To a happy birthday out to your birthday brother. Oh, yeah. Doug Daddish. We love you, brother. Ooh. Yeah, he, he's Doug, a roommate. Yeah. I don't know. Right. Is, uh, yeah, they were no roommates. wonder that party was huge. No wonder you didn't get a limo. <laughs> you both into it. <laughs> and then had Doug was there. He was back in. Back in more. Doug I wasn't running in flip flops that day. <laughs> Doug was much smarter than I was. And more. <laughs> Obviously, more even keel. Yeah, more sure. even keel. Yeah. Also, it's uh, Pistol Hawk's birthday. Dean oh, King, Keith yeah. Hawk, the father of right. AJ Hawk. Yeah. Okay. So right. we have like a little three-way text yeah. strand we get going oh, every, every year. Yeah. yeah, it's very cute. Saying happy birthday to each other. Yeah, it's adorable. Nice. I love it. Three best friends that anybody <laughs> ever had. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I love it. Happy birthday. Yes. And congrats to, to the Zwick family yeah, so for their new addition. And congrats right. to you and being back yeah. in the game. Glad to be working again. Ready to do this every Monday throughout the rest of the season. As long as Nicole Cox will have us at Roosters. Come in tomorrow for our, uh, Appetizer Tuesday, two Mozzarella bucks. Sticks. Two bucks. They're two bucks. That's Berm, and I'm Austin Ward. We'll be back next week here for the podcast in the Horseshoe Lounge at Roosters. See ya. All right. You gotta take that home. I don't know if that's the first step for the first side of the bed. Corpus w- sleeps on. You gotta put it on the ceiling, right? Above I said that so you just make it safe. Yes, we'll look at it. Oh, like if I was whiteboard. That wouldn't be terrible. <laughs>